In this video, we're going to have a look at how to start to make these lines all meet up. So we're going to intersect the lines, make the walls miter, make them all join up. We're not worrying too much about the internal walls at the moment. I don't want to overcomplicate this process. So we're just going to create it as a um, as an exterior wall. If we've got walls that don't go all the way, what do we do to make them work? We can intersect them, and I don't have my intersect tool turned on. I'm just going to show you how I created this toolbar right now, and I'm going to show you how we can add to it, just so we can use that. Oh, that's found under Window, Toolbars, Toolbars. I've already got this toolbar, so I need to edit one. So the first thing I need to do is find the one that I've created. This is move. I'm just going to delete this one now and start again just to explain it to you better. Delete. New toolbar. Move. What am I going to put in it? Edit. Move. So this is from my current menu structure. Drag down to multiply. And I also like some of the ones out of reshape. I'm not going to use trim because I can do that with my keyboard. And I'm going to put this one explode in here as well. So these are all the ones that I generally put in there. I, there's also one other that I often will use. And that's offset constraint. So down to O. And so that's just those Zs that we found down here. Uh, but it's nice to have that up there as well. So window, turn it back on, toolbars, move. It always puts it at the top left, which I never want it to do. Let's just move this one back here and move this one up here. Yeah, so now we've got those available to us. Why was I doing that? To show you how to do intersect. If I've selected two lines, so I'm going to choose this line and this line, this is the internal lining, plasterboard, we can press intersect and it will join those two lines. Select, select, intersect, obviously I'm going a long way so it's making it a little bit tricky. select, select, intersect, and now I don't really want this one to move, so I'll just extend this one all the way across, and then what I wanted to do with this line, if I can grab it, is to just drag a copy of that one that way, and then they can intersect like that. So once we've finished, if we've finished, we can clean that up, trim this back. I could get rid of all these if I don't want them there. I'm going to leave it like that for now. And then when I turn my trace reference on, we see that that's what it looks like. Now this is a little bit awkward, isn't it? Because it's a brick on the outside. And so what we realistically need this to do is that. Uh, but I have no idea how the person who designed this was planning on making that work. So we have a frame that ends like that and we need to pack out this wall. So I'd always do one brick return to make that work. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about that at the moment. What's happening with this window? Wherever I've got openings for now, I'm just going to trim them all out. Trim, 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 trim and just leave the exterior wall open. Again, this is a similar sort of funny one. 110 10, and we'll just see what's happening here. Similar to the one before. This is a little bit different in that we've got, what's this measurement? 110 on the inside. So we're going from brick on the outside to brick on the inside. So that's a bit weird uh, and a little bit hard to um, define in terms of how it works.
so we could have this brick wrapping around so just makes it a bit tricky when we change direction of materials where does that brick stop for instance does it show yeah shows that this brick's going up here let's trim it there of course with the window everything has to trim here anyway Go back, trim, 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 trim. I'm not going to worry about creating the box window detail at the moment. I'm just trying to create wall outlines. How do we intersect this one? Again, it's a strange one. What do we have here? Is that brick? That's 120. So I don't know what that's meant to be. So we'll just intersect the outside ones and then we'll run these through. Again, we have a window there, so it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to do this the whole way around. I'm not going to worry about that now. What we're going to be left with is something like this. So we've got elements that are closed. Now what I wanted to show you with, with this is how to draw a, a fill or how to finish this fill off. We've also got, in this case, brick on the outside, so that's going to be simple. Let's just do this one that's all on its own. So to use a brick fill, we go into our fill settings. I'm going to choose drafting fill because that gives me the largest range. Uh, this isn't one of my personalized, so this is just the standard Archicad one. And we see that this is very limited. There's not a lot of different types of uh, ones available in this. I've, I'm currently, I had some issues, some technical issues. So I've opened this up in the international version. And um, you'd see that the one that I commonly use is the uh, Australian version of Archicad. And it has a lot more options. I don't know that we necessarily need them, but that is a bit helpful. I like this one I think here the um, the double quarter for brick. I think I've used this one before. And for now we're just going to um, maybe make it orange just so we can see it. I don't want an outline on my fill at the moment. Sometimes I do want outlines but at the moment I just want to show the brick. And I'm going to magic wand so spacebar, hold spacebar, click inside this space if I click on the outside face, it's going to do the whole thing. If I click inside, it's just going to do that internal skin. And then that's good. In terms of a 1 to 100 representation, that's not a bad way of showing it. If I select that, I can then change that if I find one that's more appropriate. We see that one's further apart, so that's not appropriate. I could have a look through to see if there's any other sectional ones that might be appropriate. So This one says common brick, but that's not how we show brick. That's how we show concrete block. So. Again, be careful with using Archicad without um, definition. Just because it says something, it doesn't mean it's necessarily right. Uh, the other thing that we could do, of course, you have to be very careful with this, is if we wanted to change the setting of this, I could pick up that setting by pressing Alt, and then go into my fill settings, my fill types, and change the scaling of this. Um, I could make a whole lot of mess by doing this, so I have to be very careful with what I'm doing. Point three, point six. So that's going to make that a lot closer. What else? Um, 
This is cavity, so I don't want anything. This is timber frame. What would I normally have in timber frame? I might show insulation. So let's see if we have an insulation fill. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. There's one here that's called bat insulation. Let's see what that looks like. Now, what this is creating is a, a hexagon. So again, if I wanted to change the setting of that, looks like this. Um, let's change that down to 0.6. Now I wouldn't normally use this as a fill for a bat insulation. I, I would sometimes use this as a fill for a polystyrene insulation, but sometimes I might also use um, a hexagon for polystyrene insulation. Sorry, I just realized why sometimes my sound might be mucking up. I'm, I'm putting my finger too close to my microphone. Um, apart from that, if we want to get a insulation fill, Sometimes the way that I do that is not to use a fill at all, but use a, a line type or a piece of furniture. So I'm just going to type in sue. And we see this fiber insulation object. So rotating this around. I'm just going to get rid of this fill for a second and show you what this would look like. So except for the fact that it's a, an object rather than a fill, this is actually a really good method for trying to represent insulation. Now do we need to see that much information at a scale of 1 to 100? No, probably not. I would, I'd more likely use this object um, if I was trying to draw a sectional detail of a wall or a plan detail of a wall at a scale of 1 to 5 or 1 to 10, maybe 1 to 20, but I would recommend that um, 1 to 100 is way too small to see that. So it's up to you. You could also leave, if it was a timber frame wall, empty. Now again at this scale we wouldn't normally show each timber stud or noggin or things like that. We wouldn't show each member. We're just trying to show the whole theme. Just like we're not showing each brick, we're showing a brick pattern or a brick hatch for a wall. But that's generally what we're trying to achieve. Now, uh, in the next video, I'll try to clean up this whole thing so we can see what that whole thing looks like. And then um, we'll go from there.